Another day! Another day. What's up, everybody? So, my name is Russ. I'm with rwgresearch.com. Today I'm going to bring you something kind of interesting. Um, if you'd like to make your own circuit boards, but you don't think you can do it, uh, I found a pretty good way to do it, and I'm going to show you uh, some of the steps. This isn't going to be a full video. But I'll link you guys in the description. Look for the other videos where I've showed you in the past how to make these. So, for a long time, I've been trying to figure out how to make circuit boards. All right, something similar to this. Okay, and what I know how to do is design the circuit. Okay, and you'd print it out. It would look something like this. All right, without the components labeled on there, but just the actual layout of the circuit traces themselves. You design the circuit, you print it out um, on a particular type of paper. What I've used in the past is actually magazine article paper, the really slick paper. Okay, And the new thing that I have done since Kevin Williamson has showed me how the best works the best is a photo paper. So it's just a really glossy paper. And the reason you want glossy paper is because you're literally transferring toner. Okay, so um, the first step is design your circuit and make it and print it out, and you'll have something like this. And what I usually do is I'll print it out on a sheet of paper. Uh, you have to use an ink, uh, a laser printer that that uses toner. Okay, you have to use a laser printer that has toner. Um, I happened to just acquire one recently, um, something that got thrown out at work. Supposedly it trips breakers, but if I can turn it on and print something and turn it off, then I'm good. So what you do is you print it out and uh, on the piece of paper. And then what I usually do is take my other paper or my photo paper or my magazine, slick magazine pieces, and I will tape them over top of that paper and I'll run it back to the machine. That way I know exactly where it gets placed on the paper. Okay, That's how I do that. So after you get it that far, um, and by the way, you'll need some copper clad board. All right, this is just a uh, like a fiberglass back with a copper front. It's called c copper clad board. So you print it out, put it on the paper, get your copper clad board, and um, there's a couple ways of doing this. Now the reason I'm making this video is because I finally figured out a good way to do this. This is what my normal um, circuits turn out to look like. Okay. These I didn't even peel off all the way. You can see that the traces are still on the slick paper and didn't really get transferred over to the others. All right, this is usually what it looks like. It never transfers right. Now, the way I usually do this is I'll take an iron, a hot iron, like one you, you'd borrow from your wife. Don't lose it though, she'll be mad at you. Trust me, I, I know from experience. Um, anyway, the uh, iron get that thing hot and try to transfer the toner that way okay so what you're literally doing is melting the toner and because this paper is slick you can transfer it over but you can see here I didn't have much luck all right these are still stuck to this board I, I just I couldn't get it to transfer always have had that problem and if I do get it to transfer it turns out something really bad like this out there in the corner you see where half the traces are missing you gotta go back and try to fix that and um, you have breaks in your circuit like that, it's not going to work. So I've always fought this for the longest time. So finally, I figured out a way to do it. At work, they threw away a laminator for laminating um, paper. Like, uh, I don't know what they use, some sort of a plastic, and they run it through this laminator. This one looks like this. You run it through the laminator, it laminates both on both sides. It's really nice. They threw this one out. Um, I plugged it in and it seemed to work okay. Maybe they had a problem with it, but I haven't had a problem with it since. So, the best way I found out is to use a laminator. Now, I did something to my laminator um, that I would like to show you. And because I want to show you how long this takes, all right, I have made a reducer, okay, <laughs> sticking out the side of this laminator. In case you want to know what this is, this is what the laminator looks number is, part number. All right, this is supposed to go up to five millimeter thick stuff. Now, I've got a couple different clad boards. Um, 
and I'm just going to stick it in here and let it go to show you how slow it turns. All right, so there we go. It's going. Can you tell? All right, it's moving. So I'm going to set the camera right here for you. So this is what I've done. I've taken this laminator and I've modified it. I've taken the original motor, all right, I've taken it out and I actually used an old drill reducer. This actually still has all the different, um, it has three speeds. Right now it's on the slowest, well, or the fastest, whichever one you say it, the most reduction, okay? So this is, this motor, it's going to be upside down for you. Oh no, look at that, it's right side up. It's 4.25 RPM. Four and two fifths RPM. It's kind of a weird way of doing it, isn't it? Um, now, originally this this thing ran pretty pretty fast, but I decided that I wanted to make it slower. So I had to pop it down there because I'm running it backwards. I'll explain why. I wanted to make it run slower. So what it is, I took a drill, took it apart. It had a bad clutch in it, so I just got rid of the clutch altogether and just used the gearbox. Um, I made a couple of couplings and a few other things. I will stick some pictures in here of the three components um, as I had it. I did take this entire reducer apart and put it all back together to make sure it was going to work okay for me. And just rigged it up to the rolls inside this thing. Now, the thing that you need to know is the reason I reduced this is because I wanted to get the max amount of heat transferred from the paper to the um, copper clad board. So I wanted it to run really, 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 really slow. I've heard people, after I found this laminator and thought maybe I could use it for this, I looked online and I've seen people run it through there like 10, 15 times, and it does work. Um, but I wanted to just go ahead and hook up a reducer and let this thing run through really, really, really slow. Um, it runs now at about 0.3 revolutions per minute. Okay. Uh, the rolls are probably about 3 quarter inch round, so you can do the math on how long it takes to get through here. Um, so, like I said, originally I had this iron and I tried it this way. Now I'm using this device and actually transferring this way. Now I'm just running this through here to show you how long it takes, to show you how slow it is. It runs somewhere around 235 degrees, okay? So that's about how hot it is. Um, it's turned all the way up. Um, again, this does go to 5 mil. The thicker material may have a hotter temperature. I don't really know. So, the thing that I found out is that if you get your paper and you're not careful, you'll melt it. As you can see I did here. It actually melted it to the point it wanted to get peeling off. Alright, now, the reason I have got to watch this thing really carefully and the plastic is hitting is because when I took this apart, originally it had a gear here that turned the uh, rolls the other direction. Well, now I hooked it directly to the bottom roll, and now it runs backwards. Um, it was the simplest, easiest way to connect these pieces together, so I just did it. Um, if you'd like to see the bottom side of this, it doesn't really look any different. I just literally took a piece of angle iron and mounted it right on there. That's it. Other than that, there's no real, there's no modifications to this at all. It's, it's originally factory. Um, so that's what I've done. Now, here is my normal results like I just showed you. Uh, this is after I etched it. Um, in order to etch the circuit board, you'll need a solution as such. This is, happens to be Radio Shack. Uh, this is PPC Etchant Solution. Solution. Um, so you can buy this at Radio Shack. You can probably find it online. It is toxic. You don't want to just dump it out after you're done. So that's what I use. Um, now, to show you the quality from this with an iron and the finished quality with this laminator machine. So, there's a few hiccups down here. That's because of, of a printer problem that wasn't a part of the transferring problem. But as you can see, it transferred every bit of ink, of toner, I should say. Now, the little spots that you see are actually the holes that are in this board. So, that's the only place it didn't transfer. 
and that worked just beautifully. So now I can finally make good circuit boards and not have to worry about this stuff. Now I did look up this laminator. This was a pretty expensive piece of equipment. Um, I think it was around 200 bucks for a laminator like this. You might be able to find one on eBay. It may not have to be as good quality as this. It just has to work. Um, but nonetheless, it does work. Now you can see how slow this is going. All right. If you guys get one of these at home and you try to run something through it, watch it. It's extremely much, much faster. Um, this is, I believe, about a 12 to 1 reduction, if I'm not mistaken. So, that is what I really wanted to show you. Um, I, uh, I don't really have much more than that. I if I can get my camera to sit where I had it. There we go. I don't really have much more than that. I just wanted to share that with you. Um, one of my friends sent me an email and said, Hey, there's nothing to watch on YouTube. Can you make a video? So, I thought this would be interesting. It's kind of a helpful video. Um, again, check the description. I'll link all the other type of little videos that I've made circuit boards in. And you might enjoy those and get a little more information of actually the etching process. Um, there is better ways to do this with a light transfer type of thing. But I don't have that particular equipment. So I'm using what I got. That thing is really slow. Just out of curiosity, let's see what the temperature is of the copper coming out. It's already, it's already cooled by the time it got this far. And there it's showing 200 degrees. 205. So, that's all it really takes to get the transfer to work. Um, the HP paper works well. The photo paper, you can probably use any type. Um, I do recommend sticking paper on both sides so that you don't overheat the actual backing of this because this is some sort of a weird plastic and it does melt. Um, it, will not, it doesn't melt in the copy machine. It runs through it really fast. Um, or the printer, but when you run it through here, it will melt. So other than that, for those of you who would like to uh, get a little sneak of my um, cleaning process, because I'm in the middle of cleaning my basement up, this is kind of what it looks like. It's a giant freaking mess, man. Um, I, I have been working really, really hard getting all this stuff cleaned up. And one day at a time, I'm getting it. Um, so hopefully the winter will be over soon and I can get back to working on some Stan Myers research and some PAP research. One of the reasons I want to get this working is because I've got uh, some PAP circuits and some Stanley Myers stuff that I would like to do. Stan Meyer, I should say. Um, okay, well that's it. I'm going to let you guys go. Um, RWG Research is my website. Please do check out open-source-energy.org, and uh, there's lots of good information on there. Lastly, I will say, if you don't want to make a printed circuit board like this, this is the other option for you. It's just a um, soldered breadboard. A solderless breadboard looks like this, and that's also a way to print it. That's real good. Also a way to prototype your prototype your circuit boards. So you have many options. This this works really well if you don't have the ability to etch a circuit board. Oh, we're almost there. Huh, that thing is really slow. I mean I was impressed that I got that thing to work the way I wanted to. But it does work. And uh, it transfers really well. So that's it. I'm gonna let you guys go. Oh it's done! Let's see how hot it is. Huh. Only heated up to like 84 degrees. That's more than 84 degrees. That's hot. All right, we'll let it cool down. Cool. So that's what you can find. Use your resources. Uh, find like this stuff like this in the trash, even if it didn't work because it had a broken gear or missing something. You still may be able to get it to work um, and play around with this stuff. So yeah, have a good day. Peace and love to you guys. And I'll see you soon. Um, hopefully I get more done in the future. Got that new baby coming, so got to take care of mama and the family. See ya. Bye-bye.